when we're talking about uh, political corruption in full bloom in Philadelphia, you have to see that as sort of part and parcel of the city's very rapid growth. I mean, corruption works best when there are plenty of political gifts to bestow. Corruption works best when there's very rapid pace of development and when the city is letting out contracts and when the city is developing new parts of its region, laying in transportation. So that's the context. I mean, it's this context of a period of very long, almost unbroken industrial growth and population growth in the city from the 1870s through World War II that allows the Republican Party machine to build up a network where everyone can be plugged in. Right after World War II, there are a couple of political figures who burst on the scene in Philadelphia, Joseph Clark and Richardson Dilworth. Uh, Dilworth was a decorated war hero. They come back into Philadelphia and begin asking some difficult questions very publicly um, about the city's finances and about the um, democratic nature uh, of politics in Philadelphia. Again, in this context of we've fought and died around the world for democracy. Do we have democracy here at home? Dilworth particularly was very aggressive. Um, he had a slogan of uh, sweeping up, you know, sort of cleaning up, and he would go around uh, and give speeches and challenge Republican leaders in the city to debate him. He'd bring a broom with him, you know, sort of histrionics, um, you know, sort of street theater politics. Um, but this actually led the newspapers to begin to do some investigations. And, and what they found was that there was um, about $40 million in city uh, money that had gone unaccounted for. Um, and, of course, that leads to investigations. Um, that leads to some suicides.